I'm Marin, and this is Post-its and Pens. Hello and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is Marin, and here you will find a little beauty, a little books, and a little teaching content. So if that sounds like something you might enjoy, I would love for you to stick around and subscribe and join me in my little corner of YouTube. In today's video, I am going to do a rapid style response to the 20 questions book tag. I tried to Google to see who actually created this. I was seeing posts all the way back to 2016 and I could not find the originator. So if you happen to know who it is, please feel free to let me know. But I am going to go ahead and just link a couple of the videos that I found or blog posts, things like that, in case you are interested in seeing who else did the tag. And I will also leave the questions below should you want to answer them. So let's go ahead and get into my answers to the 20 questions book tag. I am going to be looking down at my computer to read the questions as I am filming with my phone, so forgive me looking down. I am going to give my answer as quickly as I can, just with whatever pops into my head. So let's see what my responses are. Question number one wants to know, how many books are too many for a series? Now, I would usually say more than four or five but Harry Potter had seven and I felt like that worked out okay for that. So I guess no more than seven, but ideally four or five. Question two, how do you feel about cliffhangers? I like them perfectly fine so long as I know there will be a resolution. So like a lot of book twos have a cliffhanger to get you to read book three, etc. I'm fine with that as long as the author gets the next book put out. And a lot of times I enjoy cliffhangers because they make me want to read more of the series. Number three wants to know hardback or paperback. I would say both. I like the way hardbacks look on my shelves. They're like aesthetically pleasing, but I like reading from paperbacks because they are lighter and easier to carry around. So both. Question four, what is your favorite book? So I don't know that I really have a favorite book, but one that I really, really enjoyed when I read it was These Broken Stars by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. So I guess that one. Question five, least favorite book. And there are two that popped into my mind immediately. I hated both of these for the same exact reasons for the most part, but for one of them was Scarlet by A.C. Goggin. It was a retelling of the kind of Robin Hood tale focusing on Will Scarlet, who was actually a female, and I just really did not like it. And the second one is Splintered, which was another retelling. This one was an Alice in Wonderland retelling. It was written by A.G. Howard. Did not like it at all. At all. I'll leave my reviews for both linked down below in case you're curious why, but those are easily my least two favorite books that I have read. Number six, love triangles, yes or no? And my answer is sometimes. When it's done correctly... I'm okay with it. When it drags on forever and ever and ever, I'm not okay with it. So I need love triangles to be wrapped up kind of quickly, maybe within a book and a half. If it takes longer than that, then it's a no. Just get to the point, basically. I just, yeah, I don't like love triangles for the majority of the time, but there are a few that have been done in ways that I didn't mind them. So sometimes. Okay, number seven, the most recent book you couldn't finish. This was Born at Midnight by C.C. Hunter. I just really didn't like it. It did not interest me. It didn't grip me. I didn't care about the mystery. I didn't like the main character. It was just a no. So I talked about this one in my May wrap up, which I'll link up in the cards if you would like to read it or watch it rather, but yeah, didn't like it. Okay, number eight, a book you're currently reading. So I am currently working on The Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Harrow for whatever a thon. It is a host fave and I am enjoying it. I'm about 65% of the way through it. Okay, number nine, last book you recommended to someone? Probably 
Call Down the Hawk. I recommended that to a couple of people who had enjoyed the Raven Cycle but hadn't read the sequel series, I guess. So I recommended that they give that one a go. Uh, number 10, oldest book you've read by publication date, that would be Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. And number 11, the newest book you've read by publication date, that one is Mr. Impossible by Maggie Stiefvater. That one just came out like a couple weeks ago, and I really, really enjoyed it. Number 12, favorite author. So... I don't know that I really have a favorite author. I have authors that I've read multiple books of that I've enjoyed. So people like Brenna Yovanoff. I used to think she was a favorite, but the last book that I read by her, I didn't really like as much. Um, but yeah, I don't really have a favorite author. I don't have auto buy authors. I just kind of flit around and see what strikes my fancy. So I can't really answer this one. Number 13, buying books or borrowing books? Borrowing. I am not allowed to buy books this year. I mentioned that in my low buy introduction, which I'll link up in the cards, but I am not buying any books this year. I am really making use of my library and I am really enjoying that because then I can read the book and turn it back in without it sitting around and cluttering up my house or my shelves. So borrowing is my answer. Oh, number 14, a book you dislike that everyone seems to love, The Hunger Games. It's very well written. I see why people like it. I just can't do it. I can't handle books where kids are killed. I just can't do it. I think it's the teacher in me, just can't do it. Did not like the book, did not read the rest of the series. I just can't do it. So The Hunger Games, but also I did not like Th Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Moss. I didn't like it so much to the point that I've not wanted to read anything else she's written. So those would be my two, I guess. Number 15, bookmarks or dog ears? And it depends. If it's a hardback, bookmarks. If it's a paperback that I own, I tend to dog ear the pages, especially on mass market paperbacks. Library books, obviously, I definitely use a bookmark, but hardbacks, I use a bookmark just because I like to keep them looking nice. Paperbacks, I don't really care. They kind of get banged up because I throw them in my bag and stuff. So yeah, both, but it just depends on what kind of book I'm reading. Okay, at number 16, a book you can always reread. So I would say Harry Potter. I am listening to the audio of those to finish out the series. I just need to do Deathly Hollows, and then I will have reread the whole thing on audio. I really enjoyed that. I can also reread any of the Percy Jackson books. I love Percy Jackson. He is like my favorite fictional character. And also the Narnia books. Those are just kind of easy comfort reads. So those three series. Number 17, can you read while listening to music? Yes, but I don't do it very often. I am a weirdo. I like to have some kind of noise in the background. So a lot of times I'll turn on the TV and just have it playing random things in the background while I read. I cannot sit in silence. I need to have something else going on. It doesn't distract me. It doesn't bother me, but I need the noise, almost like a white noise to read. So yes, although I prefer TV over music. Question 18, one point of view or multiple? I'm fine with either. The majority of the books that I read are one point of view, but I can do dual point of views or even multiple point of views without any trouble. So either one's fine. And number 19, do you read a book in one sitting or over multiple days? Usually over multiple days. I listen to a lot of audiobooks, so that takes me a week, sometimes two weeks, depending on the length. When I am teaching, I cannot just sit down and read a book in one sitting. I usually read a little bit here and there, so it takes me like a week or so to get through them. I can sit and read a book in one sitting, but I get bored. So I like to break it up and carry it over the course of a few days. And then question 20, you're supposed to tag some people. I'm not going to tag anyone, but if you would like to do this, feel free. You can link me to your video in the comments 
even if you've already done it, I would love to watch it. And I'll leave the questions, as I said, below in the description box should you want to check them out. So those were my answers to the 20 questions book tag, or rather 19, since number 20 was tagging people. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more from me, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, everyone.